Hello and welcome to another video. So in this video we are going to be talking about Newton's method. So you might be thinking, oh Newton's method, this is have something to do with like, you know, derivatives and whatnot. It kind of does. But exactly what is Newton's method? So let's go and talk about that. So there are so let's talk about before we get into that, let's just talk about roots of functions. If I give you something like f of x is equal to suppose let's say x squared minus four and I ask you to find the roots of the equation. Well, that's pretty simple. So I would go x squared minus 4 is equal to 0, or x plus 2 times x minus 2 is equal to 0. So that would mean that x equals to minus 2 and plus 2. That's simple. However, not every kind of polynomial or any kind of function in general has a, has a nice whole number solution like this, or a nice kind of analytic solution. For example, if I give you the equation 2x cubed minus 6x squared plus 3x plus 1 and ask you to find when this is equal to 0, well, that's something we can't quite do because you would have to solve for x. And using standard algebraic techniques, this just isn't possible. You can't really use um, the quadratic formula. You can't factor this. I mean, you could use something called a cubic formula, but I mean, that, that's just ridiculously long. So polynomials and functions in general, although the roots are generally nicely given in like class situations and whatnot, in reality, most solutions to polynomials in general can't actually be done algebraically. So if that's the situation, how do you solve them? Like, if I give you a function, a general function, and ask you to find the roots of that function, how do you do that? So for that, we have to use something called Newton's method, or sometimes called the newton raphson method. So, Newton's method. Okay, so what exactly is this? It's an algorithm of sorts. So let's gonna talk about how this actually works. It's a root finding algorithm. So let's go ahead and actually talk about this. So how does this work? So the first step is guess a root to the solution, uh, or I should probably say guess a root to the function and call it x1 or something. So and call the root x1. Okay, so now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be iterating that root over and over through a sort of an algorithm. So how does that work? Well, okay, so the next guess, okay, so just to kind of clear it up, we're going to guess a root to the function and call that root x1. So, so some function f of x. So just to be very clear, to the function, f of x. Okay, and call that root x1. Okay, fine. So, in that situation, let's kind of talk about what we're going to do after that. So, if I have some x1, our second root that we're going to get as a result of using this algorithm is going to be equal to x1 minus f of x1 over f prime of x1. So, we actually have to find a derivative of this particular function that we're doing. Okay, so that means x3 is going to be equal to x2 minus f of x2 over f prime of x2. And then, as you can probably imagine, x4, x4 is going to be equal to x3 minus f of x3 over f prime of x3. And we're going to be doing this over and over as much as we need to, to to get our desired accuracy. Now, remember, this is an algorithm used to find numerical solutions to a particular root of a function. So we can make it as accurate as you want. It'll never be 100% accurate because we have to iterate an infinite number of times. But for most real-life applications, if you, want, if you had an accuracy of 99.9%, that's pretty good. So for our purposes, we can iterate this as much as we need to for our desired accuracy. Now, of course, there's, there's a few kind of restrictions with this. In order, to use the, in order to use Newton's method, the derivative actually has to exist, and it can't equal zero. So if it is equal to zero, we have a problem. So in general, as a result, Newton's method is that x to the n, x sub n plus 1 is equal to x sub n 
minus f of x sub n over f, f prime of x sub n. So this is the algorithm used to find numerical solutions to a particular function. And this is called Newton's method. Okay, now, this might seem a bit confusing as we're kind of iterating a root. So how, do, how about we do an example of this? And we'll only be doing one example because there really isn't much variation to do these kinds of questions. And there's only one type of example we could be kind of really needing in order to kind of think about this. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this example. So find a root to, oh, of course, before I go on, the assumption, of course, here is that f prime of any x sub n cannot equal zero. Otherwise, this will be undefined. Anyways, so with that out of the way, so find a root to f of x is equal to 2x cubed minus 6x squared plus 3x plus 1. So this is just the example we talked about a little bit earlier right here. To four decimal places. So for these kinds of questions, we actually do need a calculator. So for example, at my university, where, you're, where, you're, where uh, you're not allowed to use a calculator on a final exam, this wouldn't be tested on final exam, for instance. So that aside, so find a root to f of x equals this thing to four decimal places on the interval two to three, inclusive. Okay. So how do we go ahead? How how do we go ahead and you know use this algorithm? Well, okay. Well, for starters, we need the function and we need the derivative. We have a function, so let's just go ahead and calculate the derivative. So f of x is equal to two x cubed minus six x squared plus three x plus one. And let's go ahead and calculate the derivative as well. So f prime of x is equal to six x squared minus twelve x plus three. Okay, great. So this means that x n sub 1, x sub n plus 1, is equal to x sub n minus f of x sub n over f prime of x sub n. And just and remember, for our first uh, iteration, we have to just guess and hope for the best. Okay, let's just guess xn is equal to 2.5. And this is just something arbitrary pick. I could have guessed 2.6. I could have guessed 2.7. It doesn't really matter. So this means that we get x, or more appropriately, x1 is equal to 2.5. So that means x2 is equal to x1 minus f of x1, okay, over f prime of x1. Well, okay, so we literally just have to plug this in. So 2.5 minus f of 2.5 over f prime of 2.5. So quite literally, we would now go ahead and calculate this. So 2.5 minus, well, on the top, we're going to get 2 times 2.5 all cubed minus 6 times 2.5 all squared plus 3 times 2.5 plus 1. And then we're going to divide this by 6 times 2.5 squared plus 12, oops, not plus, uh, minus 12 times 2.5 plus 3. And then we just simply use our calculators to do this because we're not going to do this by hand. <laughs> so if you go ahead and calculate this, we'll get 2.285.5714. And just to be very clear, this is equal to x2. So this is, and this will just keep repeating. Okay, so now we will now calculate x3. So x3 is equal to x2 minus f of x2 over f prime of x2. Well, we know what x2 is. That was given. That's right there. That's right there. And that thing, that's right there. So we just take this number and quite literally, you would just simply plug it in to whatever we need to. So you would literally go 2.228557.14 dot, dot dot minus f of that same number so 2.2285 uh 85714 dot, dot dot over 
f prime of 2.228.714 dot 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 and then we will calculate this and this would give us 2.22824 so just to be very clear this is equal to x3 and then of course just keep repeating okay then you just keep going so for example x4 and remember this eight to four decimal places we know we are done when the fourth decimal place won't change anymore so after this part stops changing we, you know we're done so let's go ahead and kind of you know do this so x4 is equal to x3 minus f of x3 divided by f prime of x3 okay but we know what this is we know x3 that was given right here so if we go into a calculation cell which i'm just going to skip because that would be complete and utter waste of time you would get 2.224765 okay now we do the exact same thing again so x5 in this case would be equal to f of x oh sorry not f of x it's going to be x4 minus f of x4 divided by f prime of x4 okay so if you go ahead and plug this in now we'll get 2.224765 minus f of um 2.224765 over f prime of 2247 2.224765 and if you go ahead and calculate that out well that's going to give you 2.224745 Okay, and finally, if you went and calculated x6, this mean that you get x5 minus f of x5 divided by f prime of x5. But then this right there is equal to 2.22475. Uh, but now these things match exactly to at least four decimal places. So that means in general to four decimal places, x is approximately equal to 2.2247 actually i certainly would say approximately because this is correct to do four decimal places so x is equal to 2.22475 uh, to i think i say to four decimal places yeah to four decimals this is technically this is technically correct to five to six decimal places, but I'm just going to use four decimal spaces because the question specified that. To four, yeah, I guess we could just truncate this. To four decimal uh, places. Oops. And that's it there, there really isn't much to it it's just the algorithm that we have to keep iterating over and over until we have our desired accuracy and that's all there is to newton's method there really isn't much to talk about in this video so with this final topic we have now covered everything that we need to talk about in differential calculus so for the next video we will be starting with sigma notation and then we'll be talking about the last part of introductory calculus which is integration and integral calculus in general calculus 2 and what beyond is going to be about integral calculus and series and sequences and a bit more beyond that but nevertheless with this video we have now covered all of differential calculus so the next few videos are going to be all about integration and integral calculus so i'm very excited to start with videos and i will see you then have a great day